So far, we have looked at how federal money has inflated college tuition and created bloat on the college campuses. But most concerning of all is the way that Title IV money, the Pell Grants and student loans that the federal government offers, has made American colleges and universities ideologically subservient to the passing political trends in Washington, D.C. As the old adage goes, if you take the king's coin, you become the king's man. Or, as my friend Robert Bortons, president at Classical Conversations, is fond of saying, with the shekels come the shackles. College dependence on Title IV money has brought with it a burden for colleges to demonstrate constant compliance. Compliance to accrediting agencies, compliance to federal policies, compliance to whatever new requirement might jeopardize the school's existence. When the Fed says jump, we say how high. This became particularly clear in Nixon's 1972 amendments to the Higher Education Act. Nixon added Title IX, which declared that no school taking the federal money that was described under Title IV could discriminate on the basis of gender. You probably know of Title IX because of its impact on college athletics. Because Title IX prohibits discrimination on the college campus based on gender, college athletic programs must spend equal money on both men's and women's sports in order to be in compliance with Title IX and to keep the federal money coming. In the wake of Title IX's implementation, scores of men's sports were cut and new women's programs were launched in an effort to rebalance athletic spending. Title IX has been especially cumbersome for college football, the most popular college sport by far, since college football requires a disproportionate number of male athletes on the field. Now, because of Title IX, in order to launch a men's football team, a college must usually also launch two women's teams to compensate for the number of scholarships offered to the men's football team. But Title IX has subsequently been interpreted to address sexual harassment as well. The reasoning goes that if a woman experiences sexual harassment on a college campus, that harassment places an impediment between her and her education. And since she experienced that harassment because of her gender, this sexual harassment violates her Title IX rights. This makes sexual harassment on the college campus quite literally a federal issue. And so through Title IX, the federal government has been able to step onto the campuses of colleges that take Title IV money to dictate how sexual harassment issues must be handled. In 2011, President Obama sent a Dear Colleague letter to all presidents of colleges accepting Title IV money. In this letter, Obama established a whole new set of procedures for handling sexual harassment and assault on the college campus. The burden of proof was set at the lowest possible bar of preponderance of evidence, meaning at least 51% of the evidence. Cross-examination of the accuser was discouraged, but double jeopardy for the accused was allowed, and schools needed to hire a full-time Title IV coordinator to ensure that their campus was in compliance. This created another category of administrators necessary in order to receive federal money. In 2016, President Obama issued another Dear Colleague letter right at the end of his time in the office. This letter took Title IX's prohibition of discrimination according to gender and extended this to cover gender identity. This meant that a college taking Title IV money must accommodate transgender students by respecting their chosen names and pronouns, as well as allowing them access to the bathrooms, locker rooms, and other accommodations that correspond to their gender of choice. This launched a barrage of spending on facilities as universities across the country attempted to remodel their bathrooms to accommodate these new requirements. It's worth noting that most campuses have opted to create bathrooms and showers that are gender neutral and accommodate one person at a time, rather than attempt to just send biological males into multi-person women's restrooms. Our common sense has a way of getting the better of political sensibilities. Shortly after President Trump took office, his Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos, rescinded Obama's Dear Colleague letters. However, President Biden is currently reinstating many of these same policies. Watch closely to see how colleges and universities once again must bow to a twisted ideology just to keep the federal money flowing. We've spent the last year covering the problem with Big Ed on our blog and on our YouTube channel. If you are new here or returning to view this series and you would like to follow this conversation, please go to our YouTube channel and click subscribe and click the bell icon to receive notifications when we publish new content. Or visit nsa.edu and click on the blog to read more in-depth analysis of this topic.